um, how about I, we record so seven people doing this and then we watch Well, it. my plan was to record you guys and them and then I'll get a lot of stuff done. Example number three. Uh, they're not going to get anything done. Do they never do anything. For example number three, we are given x cubed. Uh, <laughs> minus 6x squared. I can't believe you tried to bribe me with a donut. <laughs> 2 minus 8x. Okay, so now look at this one. This one, we want to find the solutions, but we're just asked to do this graphically. All right, so Mr. Adams is going to go a little bit beyond just putting this in the graphing calculator. First thing I'm going to do is I got to set this equal to 0. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2 and add 8x to both sides. So I'm going to subtract 2 and add 8x to both sides. And so then that gives me x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. So now graphically, if this has, um, this is a cubic, so it should have, or it has the possibility of having how many real zeros? Three, right. <laughs> So that, and it's going to come from the top or from the bottom. It's going to, yeah. So it comes in from the bottom. So it's going to do one of these things, possibly, possibly, right? So we have the potential to have three real solutions. Although it is possible, it is possible to have like um, you could have it something like this, I suppose. Uh, you could have it do one of these things. And then it might only have one solution. Because the complex solutions have conjugates always, so they come in pairs. And so, and so we have three solutions. If I have one complex, then I'm only, you know, I have another complex because they travel in pairs. And that, that leaves me with only one real solution. But it definitely has to cross the x-axis. All right, so now uh, the textbook says just do it graphically, okay? So... Um, I had to set it equal to zero. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Um, stay on this page. Now to do it graphically, uh, I just gotta plug it in and then check to see where where uh, my zeros are. So I'm gonna clear this out and I'm gonna say x cubed minus six x. Whoops. Minus 6x squared, right? Plus 8x uh, minus 2. And we just graph it. And I'll probably have to adjust my window because I just will. All right, so we got lucky. Um, I am going to adjust my window a little bit so we can see it a little better. So, um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Minus 5 and 5. And so I just want to remind you guys, let's, uh, let's talk about this for a second. Um, and I'm going to write this function down up here. I'm going to say x cubed minus 6x squared um, minus um, 8x minus 2. And let's write down this number 1. Now the reason I did that, and the reason I wanted to write it down, is that our zeros of the function are actually our zeros of the function are actually um, factors of one and negative two. A ratio of the factors. Well, the factors of one is just one, and the factors of two are 1 and 2. 
but you can have the ratio of those. And so it's possible to have like 1 over 2 and 2 over 1. Okay, We have all positives, so I, I just want to show you guys this. If I choose 0 0.5, which is 1 half, that's where my function is. Now that, that's assuming that the real solutions are integers. Okay. So let's just solve and see what the zeros are because clearly what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this area right here. Was it, did, wait, when we solved that, did we want it to be greater than or equal to? We wanted it uh, less than zero. So I apologize. It's not greater than. We want to know where it's less than. And so this is the area that we're concerned with right here. And this area here. What values in your what values of x will yield a negative y value, right? Because it was this expression less than or equal to zero. Okay. And so I've got to find my zero. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit second trace. Whoops, second trace, and go to zero. And I'm gonna go a little bit to the left. Hit enter. A little bit to the right. Hit enter. Guess. And my first zero is 0.324, okay? So x is approximately um, 0.325, actually, if we round it, okay? Then my next zero, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to hit second trace, choose zero. And we're going to go a little bit to the left of the intercept. Hit enter a little bit to the right of the intercept, and then somewhere in the middle, as best I could get the cursor, and I get 1.46. So I've got x is approximately 1.461. Okay, and then lastly, we're going to repeat that process again, and we're going to go a little bit to the left of the next intercept because we want to do the left bound. Whoops, I hit it one too many times. Left, right, and then somewhere in the middle. And we've got a third possible solution of 4.214. Okay, you guys with me so far? So now, what am I looking at? Well, what I'm looking at when is this thing going to be less than zero? Well, it's going to be less than zero from here to here, and we're including that. So how do I write that? Well, I could say negative infinity, comma. Uh, which one was that? That was this one. Uh, point three two five inclusive in union with this section right here. And that was from one point four six one comma four. Two, one, four. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> 